Live and on demand from the WNY News Now studios in downtown Jamestown, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us on this Friday. I'm Justin Gould. And I'm Murray Polaro. Happening now, a Warren man facing attempted homicide charges has been found guilty of felony corruption of minors and indecent assault of a young girl. Girl Details coming up. Plus, the Nashville family is welcomed home after a military makeover show. But first, Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. He's standing by with a first look at a pretty rainy forecast. Hey, Dakota. Hey, Justin and Rory. And yeah, it definitely was rainy last night, pretty much as forecast. We had those rain showers that came through. You can see what was left of them here on First Defense Doppler. They've all hightailed out to the east. And there's a few scattered rain showers left over for early this afternoon. Otherwise, the rain tapers off, but don't expect any sunshine today. I think the clouds are really going to stay here. The good news is it has knocked the tree pollen down just slightly. So all the rain we've had is starting to wash some of the pollen away, which is good news for all of us who just have terrible allergies. So uh, for the remainder of the afternoon, scattered showers will continue early. They'll stay out there. Uh, they will start to taper off as we go through the afternoon. Cloudy and temperatures fall. This is where we're going to end the day. 51 at the inland valleys to 55 at the Lake Erie shoreline with a west wind averaging around 10 to 20 miles per hour. How's Mother's Day looking? Hmm? We'll talk about it with that Brotherhood Property Maintenance 7 Day a little bit later on in the show. Justin and Roy. All right, Dakota, thank you. Our top story, we start with some breaking news. A Warren man accused of indecent assault against a 12-year-old girl has been found guilty. 25-year-old Jackson Kent Knappenberger was convicted of corruption of minors and indecent assault in Warren County Court. Investigators said that Knappenberger assaulted the girl on a camping trip last May. The man is also accused of going to the girl's home in December and setting fires with gasoline. Knappenberger was later found by police barefoot and muddy. The trial is expected to continue next month. And other news we're following. A city of Jamestown man has pled guilty to possession and production of child pornography. 37-year-old James Chapman, also known as Fats Guy and Perverted Doe, pled guilty to the charges, which carry a maximum minimum penalty of 15 years in prison and a maximum of 40 years behind bars. Chapman also faced a $250,000 fine. The U.S. attorney argued that Chapman and a victim communicated via Facebook Messenger about engaging in sexual activity in November 2014. Now, during those communications, Chapman offered to pay the victim and one of her friends $60 to have sex with him. The victim stated that she was 16 and that her friend was the same age. Later that evening, both went to Chapman's residence here in Jamestown, and the defendant engaged in sexual intercourse with them, after which Chapman paid each of them. Following that activity, Chapman used his cellular telephone to take a picture of both completely nude sitting on his bed. A review of Chapman's Facebook accounts revealed that he then distributed those photos, which constitutes as child pornography. Then in April 2017, prosecutors said Chapman began communicating with another victim who was 17 years old. During their communications, Chapman requested and received a sexually explicit image of her. He then sent that image to another individual. Now, in addition, Chapman sent the girl a sexually explicit image he took of those first two victims. Sentencing in this case is scheduled for this fall. And in other news... A village of Forestville woman, Forestville woman is accused of receiving almost $20,000 in unentitled SNAP and child care benefits. 48-year-old Krista Miller is charged with welfare fraud, offering a false instrument, misuse of food stamps, and grand larceny. Investigators with the Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office allege that from December 2010 through August of 2016, Miller failed to notify the Chautauqua County Department of Health and Human Services that she had income, employment, and was also receiving child support. This allegedly allowed Miller to receive more than $15,000 in unentitled SNAP and more than $4,000 in unentitled child care benefits. Miller is scheduled to appear in the city of Jamestown at a later date. 
And the Chautauqua County family featured on a nationally renowned military home renovation show was welcomed home on Thursday afternoon. Lifetime's military makeover with Montel Williams wrapped up production welcoming Cody Willett and his family uh, home following a full-scale remodel of the Willett property. The Willett family said they're thankful to live in such a great community that supports one another. I didn't know that it was possible to uh, to get this much support and it's been, an, it's overwhelming. Um, you know, you, you think about all the times that you're, you know, with your family and that's it and that's all you got and then you see something like this, a turnout like this. Uh, we have an amazing community. Absolutely. It's, it's overwhelming to think of all the people that have showed up for us. So we cannot thank you enough. Is it what you expected? No. It's no, over it's the top. over the top. Uh, <laughs> we could never I mean, we were, have expected anything to look like that. You were thinking just some, you know, paint floors, you know, nice appliances, <laughs> but they went above and beyond. Um, you know, the community, my uh, military makeover, all the sponsors. Um, Everyone. It's been amazing. Yeah, absolutely. The Willett family was out of their house for around 12 days as crews renovated their home. Cody Willett, he's a local Air Force veteran who was severely injured in a rocket-propelled grenade attack during a mission in Kandahar, Afghanistan. In addition to Willett overcoming, uh, is overcoming another obstacle after he slipped and fell on the ice earlier this winter, the vet won that remodel after applying online for Lifetime's military makeover show. Now, the show that was filmed here in Chautauqua County will air on July 12th and July 18th on Lifetime. And you can watch the full homecoming right now on our website and our mobile app. So it's, it's absolutely amazing. It was such a pleasure to be there yesterday. You know, I want to thank uh, Cody and the rest of those veterans who were a part of that amazing project for their service. And um, so great to see the community really come together um, to, to benefit a deserving family. Well, uh, first, I want to thank him and all veterans out there for their service. We yeah. wouldn't be free to do the things we do. Right. If it weren't we, for, we couldn't do this for broadcast them. without them. And um, uh, I, I had an uncle who told me that sometimes you're better off getting killed in war than you are coming home and living with yeah. war. Um, and I think it's just amazing that they did this for this family. It, it makes you kind of believe in people again a little bit. And, and you know, the PFC Dwyer uh, program in Chautauqua County Amazing. really needs to get credit for this. What, what they do, if you don't know, um, is they help veterans with PTSD through peer-to-peer -peer support. So all, this is all non-clinical. You know, it's coffee. You go out with the, with the guys for coffee and, and girls as go well. Go see a anyway. movie. Yeah. Just hang you out. Know, you play chess. I think they have a Dungeons and Dragons yes, club as do. well. Yes, they I know, do. Um, our, our, our Corey is a, a veteran who um, is, runs our Veterans Corner segment on WNY News Now. So, um, you know, really they do an amazing job. And they really made this possible for, for uh, the Willets to be able to you know, have this renovation, um, and, and there, there was so many volunteers. It's, it's amazing to see all the people, and, and they stood through yesterday. There were two lines of severe thunderstorms that came across, <laughs> heavy rain, and, and, and they just, everyone in that, in, in, uh, you know, stood there and welcomed the Willits home regardless, and then the skies cleared, the Willits came, the production was on, and, and it was amazing to see. So. It, it's... Uh... You watch those shows on TV and you think it just all comes together. But then when you see it being done live, you right. realize it's almost a military logistical operation in to itself. To do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, really. I mean, so it's uh, it's pretty cool uh, all, all the last. So um, hello to David. Happy Friday to you. Uh, Emily, good Friday to you. Hello to Tony. Hello to Karen. Hello to uh, Justin joining us. Lori, Will Loveless, great to see you, sir. Hopefully you are having a uh, wonderful Friday. Out there, Lori, hello, and uh, we have to say hello to Pam, hello to Beth, and hello to uh, John is here as well. Um, hopefully you all are um, enjoying your Friday. We have a lot more news to tell you about here on WNY News. Now coming up, how New York State is trying to cut back on carbon emissions. But first, a church rebounds from a fire. We check in with their progress. Dakota, over to you. And the high yesterday was 72 degrees. That's actually above average by a good several degrees. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it because we're not going to see that for a while. News Now at Noon continues in a minute, so don't go away.
Live and on demand, you're watching WNY News Now. Now open in downtown Jamestown, Pearl City Hops Restaurant and Tavern. I have some real old-timey dishes on there that I'm just giving new life to. Like there's a shepherd's pie on there that's going to have some bison in it, you know, real thick, hearty gravy. Um, then I'm also doing beer flights. We're pairing it with a set of sliders, a set of tacos, and a set of mini rolls. So everything's going to have its own pair, so you can get a taste of a little bit of everything and all the beers. We don't want to be known as the restaurant in the hotel. We want to be known as Pearl City Hops. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Happening now, a church that went up in flames last year is continuing to rebuild. In a video posted on their Facebook page, Family Church Fredonia, whose 100-year-old bell tower burned up in flames on May 4th of last year, said part of their plans to rebuild include fully replacing the historic clock. Church officials said they also hope to put in a new steel roof, improved heating and cooling system, and a total redesign of the sanctuary. These improvements are estimated to cost about a quarter of a million dollars or more. And so far, GoFundMe page has raised $7,600. Family Church Fredonia previously spent $1.4 million in renovations when they moved into the church in 2017. During the 2018 fire, the interior of the building suffered heavy smoke and water damage as well. Fire investigators said a copper gutter blew off of the church, landing on a nearby transformer, causing the fire. When the gutter came into contact with the transformer, the entire system became energized. And once energized, the positively charged electricity searched a path to the negatively charged ground. If New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo has his way, coal-fired power plants will have to go um, into the, uh, will be moved out of the state, Cuomo announced that coal-fired power plants in the state will cease operation by 2020. Plants will be required to convert from coal or end operation altogether. Cuomo said this plan is the first in the nation approach to combating carbon emissions and that the state will be available to help plants convert to other power sources and also help employees and communities impacted by this. Now, the governor said the federal government is going in the opposite direction by denying climate change and supporting fossil fuels. In other news, a local man is making political history in this year's elections as the first local libertarian candidate on the county ballot. Garrett Kane has been tabbed as the libertarian candidate for the District 16 county legislative seat. Kane worked locally and across the state to try and elect Larry Sharp as governor. Kane said he wants to concentrate on reducing the size and cost of county government, saying he wants to allow individuals and businesses to grow and innovate. He also called for more uniformity of zoning and permitting laws from town to town to favor entrepreneurship, business growth, and personal freedom. Well, a bit of television history is happening today. That is when the syndicated version of Wheel of Fortune airs its 7,000th episode. The nighttime version of Wheel premiered back in 1983, eight years after network, the network daytime version made its debut. And the show remains popular, averaging close to nearly 10 million viewers daily. Host Pac Sajak and Vanna White have been with the nighttime version since the beginning. In fact, Sajak was recently honored by Guinness World Records as being the longest running host of any game show. And the two don't have plans to call it quits anytime soon. Sajak and White are currently under contract through 2022. Yeah, I know that's a part of a lot of families, um, you know, evening activities, um, you know, maybe 
maybe with today's world being digital, you don't get to watch it as much, but I know CBS has their all access where you could watch it, you know, well, from a bus, still, from a plane, uh, from your on the dining beach. room, on the beach, right, wherever. If you're, if you're still drawing 10 million viewers, even in the digital age, That's you're drawing. That's pretty good, yeah. Uh, mine was always Jeopardy. Yeah. And I never liked the fact. I figured it'd be Jeopardy. That the questions are harder on Jeopardy than they are on who wants to be a millionaire, and but you, you make, make more money on, right. uh, by being a simpleton compared to really being a genius in something. Yeah, and Jeopardy, they I mean, they really are smart. I mean, it's incredible. Oh, wow. I watched the ones with the kids, mm -hmm. and the kids know more Geniuses. than I do. Yeah. I, I sit there going, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I, I went to school there, and I didn't know that. So right. just <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, um, so uh, yes, our Rory Polero is in for Mr. Matt Hummel today. Um, who, uh, you know, we all want to uh, give our thoughts and prayers to Matt. Uh, he's going through uh, a loss in the family, uh, and they're working through that. So uh, we just want to let Matt know. Send him good vibes if you can, folks. Be strong, um, Matty yeah, boy. We love you. We love you, and uh, that's why uh, Rory is here. So um, depending on kind of where things are at, Matt may uh, reconvene uh, next week. On the broadcast. Glad to but, be here. Yeah. Sorry for the reason. I know. I know. I always love having Rory here. And one of the big reasons why I like having Rory here, this is funny. Um, it could be our Friday feel good, I guess. Oh, okay. um, and I was just telling my girlfriend this morning, she texted me and asked if I beat Rory to the newsroom. Because whenever we have to work together <laughs> on the same shift, it's, who, it's a battle of who can get there earlier. Because I like to be like the first one in, early yep. bird gets the worm. And Rory... Also likes to do that. And the thing is, I should beat you because I live less than two miles right. away. You live a lot closer than I do. <laughs> I, but so I, I have a little bit of a commute. The last time I came in, I was here at quarter after seven. Yeah. So by the time you came in, all the blotter was done and yeah. I was looking he for stories. He did all the work. It's, it's harder to find news once Rory gets it all. So, But, um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your prayers to Matt. And um, uh, we uh, want to check in a little bit. A lot of people are saying, never good at Jeopardy. Lori... You know, I, 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 I can agree. Sometimes they go so fast. That's another one of the games. It's like Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. Um, I, I, I always wanted to go on Jeopardy. I really always wanted to apply. Yeah. But I knew that what would happen is my opponents would be Stephen Hawking and God. <laughs> right. And the questions would be third generation Mesopotamian pottery. Right. Uh, Anglo-Saxon poetry from the year zero, you know, stuff that right. nobody would know. Right, right, yeah. So, um, hello to Lori, hello to Clark. Um, let's see, other faces I haven't seen. Uh, Gary, great to see you, sir, and uh, good afternoon to uh, Donna as well. Thank you all for joining us here on WNY News Now. We have a lot more to tell you about. Coming up next, Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. He's here with a peek at our weekend forecast. And later, do you believe in Bigfoot? I do. Rory Find does. out where our new survey places New York State. We'll be right back. Want weather now? Download the WNY News Now mobile app and stay up to date on severe weather alerts. Plus, anytime hazardous weather strikes, stick with the Southern Tier's only 24-7 streaming network that keeps you safe. You're all in a tornado warning, so now is the time to go to a safe place, small room, lowest floor, near the center, away from windows. What are you waiting for? Download the WNY News Now mobile app today. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Turn to Brotherhood Property Maintenance for all your lawn care and landscaping needs, no matter the season. Brotherhood Property Maintenance does it all, from professional plowing during the winter months to expert landscaping all summer long. Count on Brotherhood Property Maintenance for mowing, landscaping, tree work, spring and fall cleanup, plus snow removal. Serving both commercial and residential lots, check out Jamestown's fastest growing landscaping crew on Facebook or call us right now to book an appointment. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. First Defense Weather, the Southern Tier's only live and local weather source. Now, here's Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. 
And welcome back. And Chuck Woolery actually hosted the original version of Wheel that premiered in the 70s. Chuck Woolery actually hosted Lingo on Game Show Network back in the early 2000s. There's your game show thing for the day. Uh, the Sky Vision Camera Network, this is coming from downtown Warren, from the Warren City Bank. Clouds are really socked in today, but at least the good news is the rain is starting to taper off. And this is how much rain fell at the camera over the past 24 hours since midnight, 0.92 uh, inches of rain since midnight. That's when that total begins. And speaking about the rainfall, this is how much uh, rain that actually officially came down. Franklinville, uh, 1.31 inches. Allegheny State Park at 1.18. Olean at 1.15. Jamestown officially at 0.7 inches. That fell at the airport. So we had a lot of soaking rain that came down last night and then mainly early this morning. But the good news is the rain is tapering off for hopefully... The State Line Speedway opening weekend hopefully will be this Saturday at 7 p.m. At least it'll be dry but chilly. Temperatures down into the mid uh, to upper 50s and then they'll ultimately uh, slide back into the upper 40s as we go throughout the race. So hopefully the races won't get canceled again this week. And if you're going, just bring a sweater. It should be dry. News now, Cam, the clouds really just socked in. That's going to be the story throughout the day. It's 53 down from our high of 62 uh, that occurred early this morning uh, with a west wind of 15. That's the culprit. Westerly wind with a cold front dragging in that colder air. Got a wind gust of 21, and it feels like 48 degrees when you step outside. First Defense Doppler has really quieted down from where we were yesterday, but we still do have a few little isolated showers out here near Olean. That's moving to the east-northeast. And then down in Warren County, just a few little spot showers that are moving towards Sheffield. This also is moving toward the east-northeast. But the majority of the region is dry, and all this rain is tapering off as this moves on through. This is the warm front that moved through yesterday. That's why it was warmer. This is the front that plowed on through. This is why temperatures are dropping. Notice the wind direction behind the front, more of a north to west wind component. That means cooler air being dragged in from Canada. Here's future scan through the day. The rain showers that we have early this afternoon will taper off, leading to dry uh, late this afternoon, dry tonight, nothing tomorrow. Tomorrow is the pick day of the weekend if you have anything to do, but it will be chilly. Temperatures down into the 50s, but it will be dry. Now, Sunday, we are keeping our eyes on another chance for more widespread rain for Mother's Day. I'm sorry. And it will also be chilly. Once again, temperatures still down into the 50s. And to show you Saturday, this is a longer range computer model, just to show you that it'll be basically raining all day on Sunday. That'll continue Sunday night going into Monday. So again, this is a wet pattern that we're in, and it doesn't look like the pattern is going to break uh, anytime soon. So just get used to raindrops falling. That's going to be the story. But the bigger story is going to be this. We don't see any signs of warmth anywhere, probably for toward the end of the month. So it's not pool weather yet, so don't get so excited over those 70s. I don't see any long-term warmth for the foreseeable future. Lake Erie shoreline today, temperatures here will fall into the upper 50s with a westerly wind. Temperatures are going the opposite direction. They're falling through the day as that front moved on through. Temperatures eastward here falling into the lower 50s with a west wind temperature sliding. Next seven days of your life coming up, powered by Brotherhood Property Maintenance, 55 tomorrow, 52 Mother's Day with widespread rain. The rain continues into Monday, but it looks like we get back into the lower 60s by late next week. Sports is next. Don't go away. Despite the danger. This danger. This danger is real. Do your part. Please. Slow down. Slow down. And move over. Move over. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. WNY Sports Now is powered by Phone Zone of Jamestown. With the largest inventory around, we buy and sell our own merchandise at a price that can't be beat. Have a broken screen? We'll fix it. Learn more at PhoneZoneShop.com. Rejoice, sports fans! It is Friday. 
Speaking of Wheel of Fortune, here's a quick fun fact. Former Chargers kicker Rolf Bernerska actually also used to host Wheel of Fortune uh, for two, two to three weeks during 1989. But anyways, welcome back to WNY News Now. I'm Norm Rodriguez with a look at sports. This afternoon at 4.30, the Falconer Golden Falcons baseball team will be hosting a conference game against the merged Silver Creek Forceville team. Falconer lost their last game 3-2 against Dunkirk on Monday. The Golden Falcons also have a game tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. against Panama. That game will be played at Russell E. Dietrich Jr. Park. Tonight with a 7-10 first pitch, the New York Mets will begin a three-game homestand against the Miami Marlins. The Mets are in third place in the NL East with a record of 17-20, a half game behind the second-place Atlanta Braves. Meanwhile, Miami is in dead last in that same division with a record of 10-27. Zach Wheeler will be on the starting mound for the Mets, while for the Marlins, it will be Pablo Lopez. The game will be televised on Sportsnet New York and can be viewed on the MLB at Bad App. Over the weekend, the NHL Western Conference Finals will commence. The San Jose Sharks will be hosting the St. Louis Blues in Game 1 of the NHL Western Conference Finals with an 8 o'clock puck drop on Saturday night. San Jose got to the third round of the playoffs by eliminating the Colorado Avalanche in the second round in seven games. Meanwhile, St. Louis made it by defeating Dallas in seven games, with the final game being a double overtime win. The game will be televised on NBC and can be viewed on the NHL app. That's it for sports today. Justin and Rory, back to you. All righty, Norm. Thank you very much. Well, a new survey from the Travel Channel and Bigfoot field researchers found that New York State has some of the highest reported Bigfoot sightings. That's interesting. The report said that New York finished fifth in the United States behind Washington, California, Pennsylvania, and Michigan in sightings of a mystical creature. Now, according to Bigfoot field researchers, there have been only two reported sightings in the state, in Monroe County, with the last in 2005. However, it appears that the website data on their site might be a little out of date. The Travel Channel said that White Hale, New York, which is near Vermont's border, is considered to be the Bigfoot capital of the East Coast. Now, there are plenty of legends out there. It's important to note that there's never been a proven Bigfoot sighting. At least, I haven't seen the creature myself. I haven't seen it. Um, we actually had, at one time, a reported sighting in Jamestown of a Bigfoot. Hmm. Wait, my dad and I were part of a group called the Bigfoot Investigation Unit when yes. I was like 17. Okay. And of course the, you were. These people called, <laughs> I believe in Bigfoot. Was that you an know, insult? They, no, it just. They didn't know that if the it's great. A thing, wait, wait, wait. They didn't know the great gray ape existed until 1911. So it's possible Bigfoot exists and he hasn't been discovered officially yet. I don't know. And I want to point out real quick. It's my fault that we're getting all this rain because I put new batteries in my metal detector. Uh, ah, that's so. what did it? That's yes. What did it. All right. Well, do you believe in Bigfoot out there? Uh, I'm, I don't. Do you? I, do you I don't know. Mm. Um, I'm not even going to go down that rat no, hole because I, I, that's, that's, it's, that's a rat hole. It's just like something else, but I won't mention. <laughs> uh, temperatures over the next uh, six to ten days, not really warming up. I don't see any signs of warmth anywhere, probably until the end of the month and maybe that's even a stretch brotherhood property maintenance seven day wet for mother's day i'm sorry but uh hey at least it's better than something else we could have and temperatures return back into the 60s by uh late next week all right cool dakota thank you if you missed anything we talked about check it out 24 7 at wnynewsnow.com and on our mobile app that's it for another week We'll see you back here Monday. News continues all weekend long on our digital properties. Have a great weekend. Have a good Mother's Day. Adios. Yes, happy Mother's Day.